All right, welcome back, class. This is the last chapter of the course, which is chapter 13, the closing process, okay? The closing process is going to be the steps to the accounting cycle. If you remember them, there's 10 steps. <coughs> like I've mentioned before, right? By the end of the 15 weeks of class, you guys should be able to know how to complete all 10 steps of the accounting cycle. So that is exactly what we're going to be doing next week is we're going to finish off the accounting cycle, okay? Starting off with the last five steps, okay? The general ledger we've been doing, right? We put posting to our journal. We post it to our ledger. We are familiar with that. So we're going to be talking about steps five through ten. <coughs> Excuse me. And this is going to rep represent the closing process. So step five, okay? So we have been seeing what it, how to create a trial balance, right? Where right. we take our accounts. They all come from um, our uh, ledger, right? And it's going to help us figure out if we did our accounting correctly or not, right? By, um, you know, testing um, the total debits equaling our total credits. Now, we call this the unadjusted trial balance because this usually typically happens at the end of the accounting period, but before your adjustments are being made, okay? So this is the before the adjustments are made, but it's usually at the end of the accounting period, okay? Whether you do it at the end of the day, at the end of the month, at the end of the week, whatever it is, right? In this case, this example says for June 30th, okay? So here is you we're testing to see if our total debits equal our total credits, right? So we've seen this before, but this time, usually, like I mentioned before, right, the unadjusted trial balance usually happens at the end of the accounting period when you've wrapped up your entire um, uh, transactions for that month, okay? Then step six and, or sorry, sorry, step six and seven, yes, all right? Step six is you're going to be completing your adjustment entries, okay? So things that you need to wrap up at the end of any given accounting period. So number one thing that we taught you was periodic inventory, right? It's an adjustment at the end of the accounting period, right? Uh, depreciation. You need to adjust the usage of your fixed assets at the end of the given accounting period. We also have to do supplies expense, right? Cost of materials and including bad debt if you come across it. Okay, so those these are all examples of uh, adjustment entries that you can see, right? And then, of course, you're also going to uh, journalize it, okay? Because we're moving, we're, we're creating our adjustments, right? We're moving um, our assets into um, our expenses, right? Because we're using them, okay? So once we create our adjustments, right, we journalize them post it to the ledger, and then we create our adjusted trial balance, okay? This is just to ensure when we did our adjustments, right, that we properly recorded our adjustments without any mistakes, right? right. And that we debited and credited the proper uh, adjustment accounts, okay? So that's what the adjusted trial balance does. Now, this is very key and very important to have done because this is ultimately what you are going to be using to create your financial statements. If you don't have your adjusted trial balance, you won't be able to complete anything else, right? right. These are the numbers that you're going to be piecing together your, your um, financial statements with, okay? So starting with the first one. You're going to be needing to create your financial statements. So, number one, right? They have to go in a particular order. You need to complete your income statement first, okay? This is going to tell you whether your company made a profit or made a loss, okay? Now, this is, this is not meaning that your company is 
um, in debt or anything like that, but it does determine whether you spent enough money or did you generate enough money to cover all of your expenses. That's all that it's really letting you know, right? All right. So in this case, we're going to take all of our revenues, right, especially our operating revenues, right, and we're going to calculate that against our cost of goods sold, right, because my cost of goods sold is directly correlated to my sales. I want to know how much money did I earn after taking out the direct cost to my sale, which is the cost of goods sold, okay? Because remember, if I sold a product, I need to know how much it cost me and then figure out what my gross profit is from there, okay? Mm -hmm. Then I'm gonna take my gross profit and I'm gonna counter them against all of my operating expenses, okay? So of course, I need to pay my rent. Of course, I need to pay anything other. You're going to also um, write off of your other expenses, such as advertising or depreciation. Okay, those are all included. Once you determine that, right, then if you have any other income or any other expenses, those are usually added or taken out, then you're going to go ahead and finish off with the last one, which is going to be figuring out if you have a positive or a negative number. If you have a positive number, that means you earned a profit. You got net income. If you have a loss, right, or if you have a, I'm sorry, if you have a negative number, that means you unfortunately took a loss, okay? As in, you did not, you spent more money than you earned, okay? Now, this doesn't mean the company's losing money. It's just you just spent too much money. That's it, right? Because in, right. in this case, right, how the company doesn't lose the money, right, because you, you, you just spent too much money in this case, right? You didn't earn enough money to cover your operations. So in this case, that's all that it's determining for you. Did you make a profit? Are you profitable? Are you generating and having enough sales to cover all of your expenses? That's exactly what this income statement does. It helps you answer that question. <coughs> In most cases, a lot of businesses, when you start off, you always are going to end up spending more money than earning it in the very beginning of its life. Because again, we need to acquire all of these assets, right? We need to acquire all of these inventory. You don't know many people. You're trying to build your brand. People don't know who you are. They need to buy your product, try it, and then so then they can make a formal decision on whether your company is worth it or not, right? Mm -hmm. So it takes time to generate a profit, okay? All right? So once you completed your income statement, the next one is going to be the statement of owner's equity, okay? If you have two choices with your net income, okay, you can choose to either reinvest it into your company or you could choose to pocket that profit, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, if you reinvest it into your company, that's exactly what we did here where we go, went ahead and added it back into the company, okay? Rule All of right. thumb, rule of thumb for small businesses that are starting out you should always reinvest your money because reinvesting your money will allow you to have equity and with that equity you're allowed to do much more so if you're a small business maybe you think you might branch out into trying a new department maybe you could use that money to um, renovate your store improve your store um you know things like that okay because Anything that you do to better your company will allow you to make more profits, which will in return give you more money back, right? Right. Um, and plus, especially when you owe so much money as well, you definitely don't want to pocket that money right away because you have a responsibility to pay off the liabilities that you owe. So that's also one thing that you should do too is reinvest that net income into your um, company. Now, if you incurred a net loss, 
Unfortunately, that has to come out of your company, right? You don't pay right. for it. The owner does not pay for it. The company does. Okay, so if you took a loss, if you spent too much more, it's too much money, then what you earn, you need to take it out from the company. The company is going to pay for the loss. Mm -hmm. Not you. Okay? All right? And then, of course, we mentioned other things that affect your equity is going to be capital contributions, which means adding more money to your business. So whether it's through investments, right? And then um, owners withdraw, which is, you know, pretty straightforward, right? You're taking money away from the company. You're withdrawing from the company. So again, that will um, subtract against you. Then once you've done that, you're going to determine, right, the new net worth of your company, okay? So you're always gonna start off with the beginning balance of your equity, right? What you what you originally invested your company with, okay? And then you're going to uh, either add or subtract your net income if you choose to reinvest into your company, okay? But if you have a loss, you have to take it out from your company, okay? And then whether you added more money or take away money, right, then you're going to determine what your equity is, okay, your new equity, so in this case, this example here, right, I started out with $2,000, I added two, I added my profit of 309.17, um, I didn't take any uh, withdrawals, so now my ending balance of equity as of June 30th is going to be $2,309.17, okay, once you figured out what your uh your equity is, right? This is where we plug it into our balance sheet, right? Because our balance sheet tests the accounting equation. Your assets equals your liabilities plus your equity. Well, guess what? You solved for your equity from the previous worksheet. So that number is going to be given to you. Your equity is going to be $2,309.17, right? So what you do here for your balance sheet is you're going to literally list out all of your assets, total them up, and then you're going to list out all your liabilities, total those up, add it to your equity, and see if they balance each other out. <coughs> now, if you've been doing your trial balance, Correctly, you should have no problem with um, with uh, balancing out the balance sheet. But the purpose of the balance sheet is to see where the business is standing, right? Looking right. at all the assets that you own, looking at all the people that you owe, and looking at your net worth of your company. That is exactly what the balance sheet does. It, it's literally telling you what you are currently having in your business as of right now. Okay. Once you finish creating your balance sheet, that's where we would create our statement of cash flows. Now, a statement of cash flows is actually one of the trickier types of um, statements to complete. Uh, reason being is because there's a lot of different ways that you can interpret a cash statement of cash flows, right? The first one is uh, literally looking at the actual physical cash flowing into the company and the actual physical cash that's flowing out from the company. That's one way of looking at it, right? Se right. Second way of looking at it is you're going from an accrual type of basis into a cash basis, right? All right? Which is okay. That's a little more difficult to understand because, you know, we did a bunch of accrual. Actually, that, well, the accrual basis, right? We use accounts receivable, accounts payable, right? We need to convert that in terms of cash. Did you spend the money or do you still have that money, right? So that is where, that's why um, the second way you can interpret it is going from an accrual basis to a cash basis, okay? And then the, the way that we create the statement of cash flows is it is a combination between the income statement and the balance sheet. Okay. All right.
So take let's take a look here. You're gonna start off with your net income or net loss, okay? And what you're gonna do is you're gonna separate your bit your um cash flows into three categories, right? Operating activities, investing activities. In investing activities and financing activities, okay? In this case, if we broke down our balance sheet, this is what you're going to list under each and every single one, okay? Your operating activities is mostly going to have your current and other assets and your current liabilities, okay? And that's going to determine, right? Like we've mentioned, we're going from an accrual basis to cash basis, right? So do you right. have the money or do you not have the money? Did you receive cash or are you pending on that cash? Right? You're going to ask yourself that question, right? Investing activities is going to be if you decided to spend money or gain money from a sale, right, of assets, of your fixed assets. So, for instance, if I purchase a fixed asset, is that, me, is that representing me having cash? No, because I already spent the money to buy and invest into fixed assets. So that is where investing activities is going to uh, lay, is going to be under investing activities, or um, uh, it could be from other income. Okay. And then, of course, financing activities. Financing activities is going to be your equity and your long-term loans, long-term liabilities. Yes, question. Okay, um, in the investing activities, okay, I see that the, uh, there's a parenthesis around the printer. Is it because we bought the printer? Yes, it's negative. Oh, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in, in an accounting, right, the way that we represent negative numbers is we don't write negative. We, we put them in parentheses, and usually they're red. Okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. Question? Oh, no. Oh, okay. Someone else thing. Okay. Oh, unless you're undoing your ding. Yeah, I'm, I'm, do, I'm doing it. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. Okay. And then your financing activities is going to be your long-term liabilities, so loans, right? What did you do to, to, to finance your business, right? So straightforward, did you take yes. a loan? Did you invest money into your company? Okay. And then at the end of the day, you're going to compare, right, the cash that you have currently as of June 1st and the amount that you should have at the end should equal to each other. Okay. Now, of course, I'll walk you through this, but since this is the more difficult one, I'm not going to test you on it. But I'm going to walk you through so you know how to do it for your future, you know, employer. Okay. Right. All right. And then once you finish your financial statements, then we're going to need to do step nine, which is to close out the books. So closing out the books, right, if you guys remember from way back when in Chapter 2. Chapter 2, we talked about temporary accounts. Your temporary accounts are going to be your revenues and your expenses. Why do we need to close them out at the end of the accounting period? Because this, the, these two types of accounts, right, is the best way to measure profitability, right? Because you never are going to have the same reoccurring revenue every single day or every single week, right? Right. <coughs> Excuse me. You're always going to have unpredictable sales, right? Yes, you may have a regular customer come in and order the same thing from you, but you can never predict what they want because one day they can show up to you. You say, hey, you want your regular? They say, no, I want to try something else. And that is a right. perfect way to measure, right? Oh, this person is going to change their mind and buy something else. So that is what that is the, the purpose of having uh, revenues as a way to close out to measure profitabilities because you aren't able to predict the type of revenue, right? 
And on top of that, we're going to be looking at new customers that come in, right? As well as nice. old customers leaving, right? So that way you won't be able to, yes, you can make projections and predictions for the future, but what I'm trying to say is this is the perfect way to measure your profitability because in this case, right, you have unpredictable flow of income, okay? And how do we close out that? So if we normally credit our revenues, right, to zero them out, if you remember from chapter two as well, when we talk about, um, when we talk about having an account balance, right? When we balance our accounts, we're pretending we're on a number scale, right? If you go left, right? If you go left five, that means you're you're on the debit left, right? But you need to get to the credit mm -hmm. side, right? That means you need to go right a couple, right? You need to go more than five to get to the credit side, right? So right. it's exactly like a number line where you have zero in the middle, okay? You have left as your debit and you have right as your credit, okay? Mm -hmm. So in this case, how we zero out our um, our revenues is because if they normally have a credit balance, that means you're going to debit all of your income, okay? All of your revenues and income, and you're going to close them all out to the income summary, okay? So your income okay. summary is going to be the same thing as your retained earnings, okay? Whether way, the whether what you know it as retained earnings or income summary, they mean the same thing, okay? Then, of course, we're going to also um, close out our expenses. Same thing with uh, the idea for revenues, right? You can't predict your expenses, right? Yes, you may have some fixed expenses like rent, right? Rent will always be, you know, uh, 1500 this month, 1500 next month, 1500 next month, right? But right. things that can occur randomly is this month, right? So uh, this month of November, for example, right? We have a lot of holidays. We have Thanksgiving. We have, um, we have uh, Veterans Day right mm -hmm. so in that case we will probably spend a lot of money uh, we have black friday right that's right. a lot of money that we can do put into advertising expense where for mm -hmm. the month of uh august right august there is no holiday right so maybe we wouldn't need to spend as much money on advertising for the month of august so that's a perfect example of having a um, a variable expense, right? Where you may occur it this month, you may not occur it next month, right? So that is a perfect way to measure your expenses by zeroing them out. And of course, expenses, right? If they have a debit balance to, to zero them out, to close them out, you're going to credit all of your expenses, okay? And you're going to credit them to your income summary, okay? So once we've done that, right, so here's the example, right, we're debiting my sales into income summary, we're crediting my expenses to the income summary, and of course, if you have any owner's withdrawal or anything else like that, you're going to close them out to your equity as well, okay? And of course, then once you've done that, last thing is you're going to close out your income summary to your equity. Now notice this. I'm closing out exactly $309.17, which was my profit. And because I'm, I had a uh, credit balance in my income summary, when I close that out, I'm going to create a debit for that, and I'm going to credit my equity, meaning I'm going to increase my equity. Mm -hmm. Okay, So that is what you got to do. And then once you've done that, then you're gonna do you're gonna do your post closing trial balance to ensure that your number does match the equity from your uh, trial balance. <coughs> okay. All right. Any questions? Yes. 
can you go back a couple frames, like two frames? Is this good, or did you want another one? Oh uh, yeah, that's perfect. Okay. And then the, the last one, or the second to last one, yeah. That's it. Uh, yeah. This it's just the review. Oh, the one before that. Good. Oh, the other one. <laughs> Which one? Oh, the... Back or forward? Uh, forward. So there's this one. And then the last one. And this one. Yeah, that one right there. Step 10. Okay, perfect. Yes. Oh. Okay, I see that. The, okay, the printer was fifty dollars, so the depreciation expense of eighty three cents was taken out mm -hmm. for the cost of the printer. Mm -hmm. it, it depreciated by eighty three cents. Well, it doesn't take off of the um printer, but remember, the accumulated depreciation is a contra uh -huh. account to the printer. Right. What does a contra account do to the main account? It increases it. Correct. So this is the fair market value of your asset. But of course, when you actually look into it, like looking at every single um, item on there, right, you will see that you have your $50 printer and then you have your $4 um, or what is it? What is it? Three uh, adult, like something cents, right? Yeah, it was 83 cents. You're going to have your 83 cents depre accumulated depreciation. Okay. And and that's why the printer is now 49.17. Correct. Okay. All right. Okay. So let's go ahead and do a quick review. So again, the last five steps of the accounting cycle, right? Um, this is so a uh, review for the trial balance, right? You need to list out all of your accounts from your ledger and you're going to test the, the test, the, um, if your total debits equal your total credits for equity, right? You're going to close out or debit all of your revenues. Then you're going to credit all of your expenses. Then you're going to close out income summary to your equity. Okay. And then here are the four financial statements on how to complete them. Here's a reminder of what adjustment entries are. And that is it. Okay. 